Okay, let's cover adding and subtracting fractions. We first need to start and look at when the denominators are the same, when the bottoms are the same. So let's first think about money. If we had two quarters minus one quarter, write down what that would be. Think about money, two quarters minus one quarter. Well, that's one quarter, isn't it? So that's kind of funny because uh, this number on the bottom just stayed four, but we went two minus one and we got this one up here, and that's correct. Um, so why didn't we do this? Two minus one over four minus four to get one over zero. That's nonsense, isn't it? That is nonsense. And the strange thing about fractions is that we, when these bottoms here are the same, we just leave them alone and we just combine the tops. Let's have a look at inches. Seven eighths of an inch subtract one eighth of an inch. Write down the answer. <coughs> so if a piece of wood is seven eighths long and you want to plane off, uh, cut off one eighth of an inch, what are you going to be left with? Write it down and remember the pause buttons down here, bottom left corner. Um, that would be seven minus one over eight, wouldn't it? Six eighths. And we can put that in the lowest terms. Um, divide the top by two, divide the bottom by two, and we get three quarters, right? So, again, when the bottoms are the same, we can combine the tops. And that's the strange thing about fractions, when you're adding and subtracting them. Let's have a look at baking. One third of a cup of sugar plus two thirds of a cup of sugar. What's that going to be? One third of a cup of flour plus two thirds of a cup of flour. Three thirds, isn't it? And we can put that in lowest terms. Uh, divide the top by three, divide the bottom by three, and we get one over one, which is one, or three over three is one. In any case, it's one cup of flour. So, again, when the bottoms are the same, we combine the tops. That's how we add and subtract fractions. So, obviously, uh, you do this then. If you had um, two dimes plus three dimes, think about money, what would that be? Five dimes, right? Put in those terms. Five to five goes once, five to ten goes twice, and that's a half, half a dollar. So, this is all very, it's just like a thing we do in algebra called adding like terms. Let's have a look at that. Adding like terms. Here's how the, how adding like terms works. If you have two apples and you add three apples, how many apples is that? Five apples, isn't it? Just like the dimes. Um, four dimes plus um, four dimes would be eight dimes, so it's like terms, or um, five bananas, five B plus three B would be eight B, eight bananas. So that's how we add and subtract fractions, when the denominators are the same. Okay, adding and subtracting fractions, when the denominators are different. We're going to look at examples where we need to factor one denominator. That's one bottom of a fraction. Let's take an example with money. One half of a dollar subtract three dimes, three tenths, right? What do you think that is? Write down the answer. Well, here's the procedure. We factorize one of the bottoms, in this case 10, and 10 is two times five. <coughs> Now, this is 2, this is 2 times 5. In the previous session, we saw that we need to make the denominators the same if we are to add or subtract fractions. So, to make this the same as this, we've got to multiply this by 5 over 5. And now our half becomes 
5 over 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10. It becomes 5 tenths. So the interesting thing is this half of a dollar has now been changed to 5 dimes. Which would you prefer, half of a dollar or 5 dimes? Well, they're both the same quantity, and that's okay. We can multiply the top and bottom of a fraction anytime we like. It does not change the quantity of the fraction. But it does help us because now we have 5 tenths minus 3 tenths, which is 2 tenths, right? And the lowest common denominator, what do you think that is? In either or the LCD is 10 in this case. Let's have a look at an example with inches. 3 eighths of an inch subtract 1 quarter of an inch. So the procedure is, well you can recognize that um, 4 goes into 8. And if we factorize 8 we get 2 times 4. Now if we want to subtract fractions, the denominators need to be the same. So 2 times 4. How do we change this bottom to be the same as this? Well, we multiply it by something. What do we multiply it by? Multiply it by 2. So multiply this by 2 over 2. And now the three, we've got um, this becomes 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So the 1 quarter becomes 2 eighths. 1 quarter of an inch is the same as 2 eighths, right? So 3 eighths minus 2 eighths is 1 eighth, and that's how that works. We could look at, um, we'll go ahead and do this one then, 1 half of a tablespoon of nutmeg plus 1 eighth of a tablespoon of nutmeg. Go ahead and do the procedure and add those together. Well, you need to make the bottoms the same. 8 is 4 times 2. So change this also to 4 times 2, but you must multiply the top by 4 also. So the half of a tablespoon becomes 4 eighths, which is the same quantity, it just looks different, and the denominator is the same as this denominator. So we've got 4 eighths plus 1 eighth, which gives us 5 eighths, right? So go ahead and do this one then, 5 twenty-sevenths minus 1 ninth. You'll see that 9 goes into 27, and 27, of course, is 9 times 3. So, uh, we'll factor 27 to get 9 times 3. Now make this bottom the same as this bottom. Make the bottoms the same. Make the denominators the same. Multiply that by 3 over 3, right? So we have 5 over 27 minus 3 over 27. And if the bottoms are the same, we can subtract the tops. 5 minus 3, 2. 2 over 27, right? Now, the reason we use this skill here... Oh, sorry, before we go on. Looking at this example, the lowest common denominator is 8, right? Looking at this example, the lowest common denominator of the two fractions is 27. So just to make a note of that. And... Um, Let's see why we use this uh, this technique here, multiplying by 3 over 3, because you've learned a different technique uh, before algebra, which is to find the, low, the lowest common denominator and put the fractions like this, you know, uh, minus 1 ninth, get the lowest common denominator, that type of thing. Why do we do this? Well, because it helps uh, later on when we work with letters. For example, 1 over x squared plus uh, 3 over x. When we factorize x squared, we actually get x times x. Okay? So, uh, to add these fractions, we need to make the bottoms the same. So, if I multiply that by x, now the bottoms are the same. But I also must multiply the top by x. So, x over x, just like 3 over 3. Right? So, I have 1 over x squared plus 3x over x squared, which is 1 plus 3x over x squared. So, you'll see this later. But the point is, this is a good skill to use, and you need to do this in your homework. Because we've got to learn how to do this technique with numbers, so we can then apply it to letters. I'll give you another quick example. 1 over AB minus 7 over AB. Whoops. Uh, rather, 
make that a, a C. Okay, 1 over AB minus 7 over ABC. Make the bombs the same. Multiply this by C over C. So you've got ABC, ABC, and C times 1 is C. So you've got C minus 7 all over ABC. So you'll see that later. Okay, let's look at adding and subtracting fractions when we have different denominators again, but this time we need to factor both denominators. Um, so one example, uh, in a way, is one-half plus one-third. What is that? Common mistake is to do things like this. People like to say, okay, that's one plus one over two plus three, which makes two-fifths. Or does it? Let's check that common error, for example. Um, a half of a square would look like this. Add a third of a square would look like this. Here's the area of a third of a square. Right? First of all, does that look like two-fifths to you? Or does it look like more than two-fifths? Because two-fifths is... Let's think about that. Um, and here's a nice little trick. Watch this. The problem with adding a half and a third is that the, the, the bottoms are certainly not the same. And if you look at this shape, the shape of a half, an area of a square, and the shape of a third of an area of a, of a, of a, of a square, they're completely different sh size shapes. So they're very hard to add under different size shapes until we do this. Split this also into thirds and split this one in half. Now, how many um, rectangles or squares of equal size do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And how many are shaded? One, two, three. So this area now is in fact three sixths. If you look at this area, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six squares, and they're all supposed to be the same size. And two of them are shaded. So the shaded area is in fact two sixths, isn't it? So one half and one third is the same as three sixths plus two sixths, which is five sixths. And you know that would look like this. One, two, three, four, five sixths. And how do we do it by algebra? That's what we're here to learn. Um, by math, basically. We make the bottoms the same again. Um, multiply this by two and then multiply this by 3, now we have 6 on the bottom. But don't forget, you've got to multiply that by 2 over 2, multiply this by 3 over 3. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, so this is 3 6. 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, that's 2 6. So, if we had, for example, 2 thirds minus 1 quarter, we can't subtract right away because these bottoms are not the same. We need to make the bottoms the same. So, what do we put here and here to make the bottoms the same? You write it in. See if you can do it. Three here and a four here, right? Now the bottoms are the same. Four times three, four times three. But don't forget, multiply the top by three here and multiply the top by four. So this two-thirds becomes four times two, eight-twelfths. Now two-thirds is the same as eight-twelfths. One quarter becomes one times three, three. Four times three, twelve. One quarter becomes three twelfths. The same quantity, it looks different, but it's good because the bottoms are the same. Twelve, twelve. Eight minus three is five, so that's five twelfths. Okay. How about, um, oh, and just before we go, lowest common denominator here, of course, is six. Lowest common denominator for here is twelve. That's the lowest common denominator of both fractions. Let's have a look at mixed numbers. 3 and 1 8 minus 1 and 2 thirds. First of all, we'll go ahead and change them to improper fractions. 8 times 3 plus 1 over 8. So 3 and 1 8, that's uh, 24 eighths plus 1 8, that's 25 eighths minus 3 times 1 plus 2 over 3 because 1 and 2 thirds is 3 thirds and 2 thirds which is 5 thirds so we've got eighths and thirds 
if we want to subtract fractions, the bottoms have to be the same. So put something here and put something here so that these bottoms are the same. Put an 8 here and a 3 here. So multiply it by 3 over 3 and this by 8 over 8. So this becomes 75 over 24 minus 40 over 24. Which is uh, 35 over 24. And as a mixed number, 24 into that goes once and remainder. Write it down. 11, so that's 1 and 11 24ths. Okay, now another thing that can happen is that you might need to factor both of the bottoms. So, let's have a look at 1 6th plus 5 eighths. Now, in this case, 2 goes into both bottoms, you'll see. If we factor both of the bottoms, 6 can be factored to be 2 times 3. 8 can be factored to 2 times 4. Now, try and make the bottoms the same, because if you add fractions, the denominators need to be the same. So, put something here and put something here to make the bottoms the same. So, we do the least amount of work to make the bottoms the same. If you put a 4 here, now over here we're including this 2 and this 4. Okay? Now what would you put here so that both bottoms are completely the same? Would you put a 3? Right? So you got 2 times 4 times 3, 2 times 4 times 3, same bottom. Multiply this top by 4 though, of course, and multiply this top by 3. And now we've got 4 over 8 times 3, 4 24 So 1 sixth became 4 24 5 eighths became 5 times 3, 15, and that's 24. And of course, the lowest common denominator here is 24. 4 plus 15 is 19, so 19 24 Right? How about 9 tenths minus 8 35 Factorize the bottoms and then make the bottoms the same. So 10 can be factored to 5 times 2. 35 can be factored to 5 times 7. Now put a number here and put a number here so that both bottoms are the same. So let's see, over here we've got a 5, same 5 here and here, but we don't have the 7, so put the 7 there. Now I've got the 5 and the 7, 5 and 7. So what do we need over here so that both bottoms are the same? We need a 2, right? So multiply this one by 7 over 7, and this fraction by 2 over 2. And 7 times 9, this is 63 over Multiply these, that's 35 times 2, uh, 70. Minus 2 times 8, 16, over 35 times 2, 70, right? And then go 63 minus 16. And you should get 47 over 70. Okay? So really quickly, I mean, if you had a mixed number, that's not a big deal either. I mean, something like 3 and 1 ninth minus 5 sixths. What you want to do, again, when you're subtracting fractions, is to turn these into improper fractions. That, that is sometimes helps. So 9 times 3, 27 plus 1, that's 28 ninths minus 5 sixths. Now factorize the bottoms. 9 is 3 times 3, 6 is 3 times 2. Now make the bottoms the same. Put a factor here and a factor here to make the bottoms the same. Now this is a 3 and another 3. Um, so if we put a 2, now we've got the 3 and the 2 from here, right? 
So to, to make the bonds completely the same, we need to put the other 3 over here. So multiply that by 2 over 2 and this by 3 over 3. And go ahead and solve. Let's see, 2 times that, that would be 56 over 6 uh, times 3, which is 18, minus 15 over 18 which gives us 41 over 18 and 18 into that goes 2 times remainder 5 I think so 2 and 5 18 so check that now why is this procedure uh, why do we do this multiplied by the by 3 over 3 and 2 over 2 well Again, if we had something like 3 over AB minus uh, 5 over BC, which you'll see later on in algebra, the first step is to make the bonds the same. So multiply this by A, multiply this by C, and now you have BCA, you know, BCA, same thing. So multiply this by C over C, and this by A over A. <coughs> Excuse me. So you got 3C minus 5a all over abc. So that's why we use this method. And in this case, the lowest common denominator of both fractions is abc. Of course, for this example, your lowest common denominator was 18, right? 